Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Vancouver Aquarium. My name is Madeline, and I'm your host today for our Northern Spotlights program, the show that takes you north with the Vancouver Aquarium. And today we have senior biologist David Coglin with us. Welcome, David. Hello. I'm very glad to have you here. How I'm are you doing? I'm very happy to be here. I'm very glad to hear that. So David has uh, had a long history working with lots of different creatures over the years, including what, David? Well, I started out when I was a little kid, about five years old. I had a few spiders and I had some crabs from the tide pools down when I used to walk to the beach. And uh, I've had just about everything you can name uh, at some point under including, my care. Including some carnivorous plants, right? Yes, yes. I like <laughs> carnivorous plants. I still have them. Uh huh. So David still has some carnivorous plants. Uh, wondering if anyone here, do any of you have aquariums at home that you take care of? Yes, excellent. Well, this is going to be a very interesting program for you and for everyone because, David, you're going to take us behind the scenes a little bit today, aren't you, on a virtual tour? Yes, I thought I'd kind of show you where the water comes from and where it goes and how it, it interacts and how, the, uh, how we interact with the water, as it were, and the animals. Okay, so yeah. why don't we get started? And what better way to do that than start at the Okay, at the start at the beginning. Well, um, not many... I don't know, I'm not going to assume anything, so I'll just assume you don't know where our water comes from. Uh, we have two pipelines that go out into Vancouver Harbor, bring the water in, and um, then they end up downstairs in our... Oh, oh, one of our slides is out of uh, line here. Uh, anyhow, they come into our basement area where they go through a sand filter. I'll, I probably have the sand filter after this shot. Um, so we have about one meter of sand in the sand filter. So water comes in the top, runs through the sand, it's gravity fed, and then the water just goes down into a reservoir. From there, the water um, travels to different parts of the building. So we'll just have a look at the next slide here. Okay, well, this is our holding room here. So in our Arctic holding room, uh, the water will come in through a pipeline and it'll go into what's called a sump. And what exactly is a sump, David? Well, a sump is just basically a holding area for the water. Um, our systems here, these are considered closed system. So um, if you have an aquarium at home, it's basically a closed system. You pour water in, you do the filtration and things like that, and maybe do some water changes once or twice a week or once a month, depending on how diligent you are. Um, our, we have quite a high bio load on our uh, system, so uh, we'll change the water. We'll do trickle, uh, trickles in water trickling into the system uh, once a day even. If wow. The, if it's so, a load. so when you say that you have a high bio load, does that mean there's just a lot of animals in there? Yeah, we, you know, we, we, we get animals from the Arctic. We don't always know what we're getting. We don't know how many numbers we're going to get. Uh, so sometimes we get quite a few and sometimes we don't have so many. And we've been really good at breeding animals. So we've got quite a few um, on reserve. Oh, yeah. that's excellent. Yeah. So anyhow, so this is, this is um, we're in the reserve room here, and uh, so the sump is the bottom, that's where the water comes in. So from there, uh, there's our, our sump, we, uh, we move the water through a, a system of um, filtration and, uh, and uh, refrigeration. And refrigeration is probably what I'll start with first, because that's the first thing that happens, that's the first thing we want to do with our water. Our water coming out of the harbor is probably about anywhere from, uh, let's say, 11 to 14 degrees Celsius, and that's way too warm for a lot of these Arctic animals. So we need to refrigerate our water. So we refrigerate the water down to about uh, one, anywhere from one to about five degrees Celsius, mostly between one and three. Okay. Uh, we have one of the tanks, the Arctic char, kept a little bit warmer. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, um, so this is one of our rooms here, and you can, if you look uh, just on the upper right-hand corner of the photo, there's a, a black box. And the black box is actually our uh, chiller. And so we'll run the water through the chiller and then down into the sump. And then from the sump, it goes back up through the rest of the system. The tank is actually on the left-hand side, the big black box in the middle. And uh, um, the sump being on the floor. Um, so from there, water travels through the filtration, or through the... Uh, the chilling system comes back to the tank and then we'll run it through, uh, we'll, some will run into the tank, some will run through what's called a protein skimmer. Uh, I might have a picture of that later on. Okay. And we'll also run it through what's called a, a trickle filter. So the trickle filter uh, takes the uh, ammonia out of the water and changes it into nitrite and then into nit nitrates. Um, so that's part of the filtration. Let's just so it's really quite the process. Uh, yes, it is quite the process. And uh, these are some of our chillers here, actually. Each system that we have, and we have 11 systems here at the aquarium right now uh, for Arctic fishes. And um, 
they're, uh, each one of them is a separate system. It's wow. a separate closed system. Each wow. one has its own chiller. Each one has its own sump. Each one has its own protein skimmer. Each one has its own trickle filter. My goodness. Um, so it's quite extensive, but the, simply because these are very precious animals to us, and, and mm. we don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket, as right. it were. Right, yeah. all of your fish eggs in one tank. Exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if we have a problem with one of the ch uh, chillers, then we can always, you know, we could move the fish to another tank if we had to, or, um, you know, whatever we needed to do. And I guess we put ice into the tanks occasionally, too, if we have to. Oh, okay, interesting. And I guess, I mean, a lot of work has gone into going up to the Arctic and collecting these animals. Well, that's the thing, you know, after these people do, their, you know, do all that work up in the Arctic and they bring these animals back, you know, we have to take care of them properly. So th there's a whole gang. I mean, it, you know, I'm, it's not just me. There's a whole team that works on this. Uh, the engineers putting everything together and helping us with the setup of the systems. And, and uh, I work with another fellow that uh, we work quite closely and, you know, who's doing what and, and what goes where sort of thing. Right. But maybe we can move on here. Uh, so this is one of our rearing rooms. So like I said, we have 11 systems and they're scattered all over the building. Mm. And we do have some displays in, in the blue underwater viewing area as well. Right. Um, in here, w uh, basically the same. You can see the sumps. We've got the sumps labeled. All the black piping is actually insulation. We insulate everything. All the tanks are insulated. All the piping is insulated. Um, mm. Because once we cool the water, we need to keep it cold. Right. So do you ever have any pipes freeze? Uh, no, we haven't no? had any pipes freeze okay. yet. Yeah. You know, we're only going down to one degree. <laughs> well, kind of, right, right, <laughs> you know, right. We're pushing the chillers. You know, yes. they're not normally, they don't normally run at that, uh, that cold temperature, but, uh, you know, our, you know we, we're doing it. So in the room here, um, on the left-hand side, you can see uh, there's actually four systems in this one particular room. Uh, so we have four separate chillers, four separate water supplies. Well, I mean, it's basically one water supply, but it's warm water. So, <laughs> so we have to chill the water. So we don't want to, uh, uh, you know, put warm too, the warm, too much warm water into the system at one time. So we'll do slow trickles into the system all day long, and then the chillers can handle that. Right. Okay. So what's next on our virtual uh, tour? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was talking about uh, protein skimmers, and I was talking about uh, um, trickle filters and things like that. So there's a picture um, of uh, trickle filters in the middle. The protein skimmer is a smaller sort of with the um, plexiglass on it. And then you can notice the it's all black. Everything's black. All the piping is black. And again, mm -hmm. It's all wrapped in insulation because we want to keep everything cold. And we have problems of condensation, so you get water on the floor. So, uh, you know, it's a real hassle having ice-cold water in the building because this building gets really warm and humid during the summer, so yeah. uh, the tanks tend to drip a lot. Uh, and I've got a picture later on that will show you some of our displays. And, the, and the, the acrylic that we use is actually very, very thick because uh, we don't want the heat transfer from the water to the air because hmm. the tanks would sweat and you'd never see the, uh, see the animals right. in the yeah. displays. Right, yeah, that makes sense. All right, shall we move on? Yes, let's go for it. Uh, so, again, you know, being concerned about these animals and the creatures, that every single system, in fact, every single tank that we have has a, a temperature probe in it, and we have an alarm on the system. So, uh, if something happens with one particular tank or, or with a different tank, we'll know which tank it is, we'll know what system it is, if, if the temperature goes up, if one of the chillers fails, I get a call at 2 o'clock in the morning, I have to come <laughs> running in to, to fix things. So do you actually, have you ever actually had to come in uh, yeah, at 2 o'clock? Yeah, I actually have been in at 2 o'clock in the morning, yeah. Nice. I got a call from the engineer. Uh -huh. <laughs> he said, come on in. <laughs> it's one of your uh, chillers is down, so, and so I came in. It was, it, some, sometimes they're easy to fix. Sometimes it's just a matter of pushing a button. You do push a reset button. But I've learned an awful lot about uh, chilling and chillers in the last I few bet, years. I yeah. bet, I bet. Yeah. And did you, did you just stay at the aquarium after that and just start working or...? Did you uh, go back home? Well, I can't honestly remember. Uh, you know, it's a bit of, <laughs> it was um, two in the morning. Bit, two in the morning, you know. <laughs> I think I went home. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so th this is uh, another one of our large uh, tanks. So we've had, like I mentioned earlier, we've had pretty good success in, in breeding a, a lot of these animals. So now we have to hold them somewhere. We, we try and ship them to other uh, zoos and aquariums around the world, but there's not many people that actually have Arctic exhibits or things like that. So... Yeah. Um, 
So you're doing some things here. So we're here hanging on to them. So we've got some yes. big tanks that we keep the fish in, and uh, that's a there's an Arctic cod. So you can just see the the picture has a has a sort of a white fish swimming in the in the front, and that's uh, that's one of our uh, brood stock. Uh, we got eggs and sperm from the from the adults, and then uh, we were able to rear some young. And uh, I'm sure at some point along, I have some pictures. These are not Arctic char. <laughs> um, these two tubs have um, Arctic char in them. I, I meant. Arctic cod originally. Okay. These are Arctic char. Right. Yes. Um, this system is different again because it's it's freshwater. Uh -huh. So uh, same same scenario, chilled sumps, everything for the for the char. So but not coming from the ocean. Not coming from the ocean. <laughs> uh, coming from Capilano or or um, Coquitlam or wherever, okay. getting our fresh water. So we dechlorinate the water, uh, chill it, and uh, and go from there. Um, now these guys are being reared in our holding room because we have Arctic char on display. We've got a great big display down in Beluga on auto viewing, and those animals are getting old, and, and you know they're not going to be with us forever. So right. we need to have the next generation coming along. So we're, we're rearing some young ones right, right now. Now, David, on the topic of fish, uh, we do have a guest question here from Mia. She lives in Vancouver, and she's wondering why fish in the Arctic sometimes can get very large. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, there's large fish everywhere in the world, you know, not just the Arctic. <laughs> In fact, the largest fish in the world is the um, the uh, uh, whale shark, right. uh, which is a tropical fish. But you know, the there Arctic. are large fish in the in the Arctic. There's uh, um, we've been looking recently at Greenland um, sharks, and they're they're pretty big. They're they're a big major uh, sort of well, I guess they're an apex predator, scavenger sort of thing. Right. Um, but why are they so large? I guess because simply there's so many nutrients and and there's lots of uh, things for them to eat in the Arctic. There's lots of plankton and stuff like that. Right. So they're well fed. <laughs> so usually things that are well fed get large. That's right. Now, David, we just have a few minutes left. So maybe uh, could you take us through some of the other animals that you're, that all of this uh, whole process uh, goes into uh, okay, caring well, for? Okay, well, there's the char. <laughs> um, and then uh, this is a, one of the most iconic fish in the Arctic. It's the Arctic cod. So they're the they're a keystone species. They're the kind of they're not the bottom of the food chain, but they're just like one rung up. Uh, so everything eats cods, belugas, you know, all the other larger animals. So these guys, we were lucky enough to uh, mention we breed them, and then we still have some young ones in one of our holding rooms right now. And uh, these guys that are in the picture right now, they're they're probably about um, two and a half centimeters in length. Um, I can't so remember when they were born, actually, <laughs> but they're, they're, okay. they're a few months old. It's hard to yeah. keep track, I'm it sure. It is, because we have you know, a lot of things on the go. Yes, yes. Yeah. But it must be, does it kind of feel like being a proud dad when you have uh, these oh, fish Oh, hatched? yeah. I mean, it's, that's, that's what makes life exciting. You know, mm -hmm. if you can breed fish, that, you know, and, and we don't really know everything about these fish. We don't exactly know how they're bred in the wild. Um, so, we, you know, we just use the best techniques that we, we can. Right. And we kind of go from there, you know, yeah. hum a few bars and fake it as it Right, as it right, were, right. Yeah. yeah. So this this is a nice animal. This is a nice cellus. Uh, we don't al we don't actually always know the names of all the different things we get. I mean, we sometimes know what kind of an animal it is, but we don't know what genus it is. We don't know what species it is. Uh, this one we happen to know that's a nice cellus. And this is our display. Uh, one of the displays, the animal laid eggs on display. So we took the eggs, put them into a rearing tub, and then uh, sort of went from there, fed them all sorts of microscopic little things. And you can't really see them, but there's a whole bunch of them crowded into the upper right-hand corner of this picture. And there's a few other little ones. So we have those, again, in one of our holding rooms right now, looking for somebody. Who, is, if anybody's interested in, in cold surf fish, <laughs> Arctic <laughs> fish, uh, you know, we, wanna get, we need to change some or exchange some of ours. Right. Oh, we've also had a, uh, lots of success with... Um, uh, shrimp. Ah. One of our shrimp, um, Libius, uh, it's a Libius um, polaris. It's an Arctic shrimp. Yeah. And one of the, we have a researcher down in Washington State, and he was quite interested in knowing the whole life history of that. So we had some gravid females, put them in a tank, uh, they, their eggs hatched, and then we have the little larva. So he wanted uh, samples of everything from egg right through the early life history of the mm -hmm. animal till it settles. Because nobody really has seen that nobody's before. Nobody's seen that. So yeah, sometimes you get these little tiny things, you don't really know what they are. Wow. Or where they're from. So that must be a, a pretty 
a pretty uh, a rewarding job for you to be able to sort of almost go where no biologist has gone before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we unfortunately don't have too much time left. But uh, so, David, just wondering what what's next for you and and the Arctic? Uh, well, hopefully, I'll be heading up the Arctic to maybe do a little bit of diving and to see ex you know exactly how these guys live. You know, in the wild, and yes. you know, maybe be able to set the displays a little bit differently and things yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, I might have a couple more quick photos here. Okay. I'll show you my favorite fish. There we are. How about that little guy, little cutie pie? <laughs> and then when you're working in the Arctic, you need to keep cool. That's right. You do need to keep cool. <laughs> so thanks so much, David, for uh, being with us today and for for sharing with us more about keeping fish cool uh, down here in southern BC, the Arctic fish that you're caring for. So thanks so much for being here well, as our welcome. guest. And thank you to all of you for joining us for our Northern Spotlights program. If you're interested in tuning in again, our next Northern Spotlights will be taking place next Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks for coming, everyone, and have a great afternoon. <laughs>